The following content is not intended as a substitute for professional legal advice, medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Always seek the advice of your attorney, advocate, physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding any medical or educational concerns. Hello and welcome to Empower Dyslexia. I'm your host, Stephen Urant, and we're here to help you become a better informed partner in education. On this show, we discuss dyslexia and other related disorders. We discuss research, intervention, special education policy at the state, federal, uh, and local level. Um, we also interview uh, experts in their field uh, around special education, um, literacy, as well as uh, these interventions. We also, uh, what I love to do is we interview people with their personal stories about how um, they have dealt with these learning disabilities. Um, Right off the top, please make sure that you like us um, on Facebook, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, and uh, if you love to hear a podcast, you listen to podcasts uh, through audio version, we're on every uh, app you can think of out there, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcast, uh, Alexa, Amazon, one of the new ones that's coming up, uh, we're waiting for our channel to be built, but it is, uh, we're going on Pandora. So that's uh, really exciting. Things are, things are moving on. Um, today... We have um, a very special guest. Um, we have Terry Nolan returning. Uh, Terry is a uh, certified academic language therapist. Uh, she's also um, going for her PhD, or she's, she's in the process of, of uh, getting her PhD in literacy. She's the vice president in, um, of educator and also educator uh, initiatives for Learning Ally. And Learning Ally is also one of our sponsors. Um, and we always love um, having Terry come on our show. So um, I'd like to welcome Terry Nolan. Hey, Stephen. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. You've been a busy, busy person this year. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, this whole doctoral thing. Uh, I am in the final stages of that process and in the middle of my dissertation right now. So fingers crossed that it all works out. Well, I know you'll do, you, you always do amazing work and um, I, I can't wait to, to see you uh, get your, your PhD there. So, um, so can you, can you start off? I mean, we talk about Learning Ally, and we know that, that um, you know, that it's, it's audiobooks, and it's part of assistive technology for our children who have, um, who are struggling readers, uh, learning disabilities, dyslexia. Um, but can you tell us a little bit more about Learning Ally, what its mission is, and, and um, 
what it really provides to our, our children who have um, struggling readers. Yeah, and I, I've got to say, you know what, those of you that know about Learning Ally, you probably don't know about Learning Ally in the way that I'm going to describe it to you uh, here in just a minute. Those of you that have never heard of us, uh, you need to know about us, and here's why. Learning Ally, we've been around for a really long time, a nonprofit organization that's always been about education, mission of uh, serving those individuals that couldn't get access uh, to reading in the way that typical readers do. So we've got some solutions. So we're an educational solutions organization that we are focused and dedicated to help remedy and close that gap that we have in the United States when it comes to students with reading deficits. So let me describe some of these solutions that we have. One of them, the, the thing that people know us most for and about is our audiobook solution. And we're going to talk about that more in depth. I'll be show, sharing some of that with you. But our audiobook solution is all about bringing volunteers, bringing readers that are skilled, highly skilled readers to read books for those students that need that extra accommodation and support. Now, listen, I am the first person to tell you that we have to teach the explicit skills of reading to those students that struggle. But guess what? Those programs take a long time. And what they're actually doing is rewiring the brain of a student. And that takes a while. So while they are working on this explicit instruction, they are going back to the classroom. They've got to keep up with coursework. They've got to go back and do their homework, read those assignments, and keep up with what's happening in their classes. And that's where these audiobooks, human read audiobooks, come into play. And we've got a whole solution built around that that um, educators can get access to, supporting educators with, with um, information about how to do that in the classroom in the process. We also have a professional learning solution. And that is all about, we've designed this around an engaged learning model. We know what engaged learning looks like for struggling readers. It's gotta be, uh, you know, multi-sensory. We need that kinesthetic approach. It's gotta be activity-based, those types of things. We've taken that model and that's what needs to happen in adult learning as well. Nobody wants to sit and listen to a dry lecture for 60 minutes. You, it, it needs to be active, engaged. And so we are doing that with, um, we just hosted our Spotlight on Dyslexia conference in June. Over 9,000 people, educators registered for that conference. This afternoon, I'm hosting a dive deeper session with one of the speakers where we are placing the typical teacher in the presence and proximity of an expert to get their questions answered. Where, where do you find that? You don't. So Learning Ally, we're doing that. We've also got some more things in the works. We are partnering with institutions like University of California, San Francisco, their Dyslexia Research Center, with Harvard, MIT, with, with colleges and institutions to help close this gap when it comes to reading. So Stephen, that was a big, long answer about Learning Ally. Absolutely. And, you know, for some of our parents out there that are, are new to um, or, or their child has just been identified, um, having just, I mean, if, if, if nothing more, having the, the assistive technology for audiobooks is amazing. Um, I, you know, I tell my story all the time about not being provided any uh, dyslexia remediation or services growing up. Therefore, I did not read any books. I hadn't finished a book until I was in my 40s, and it was only because I used audiobook. And when audiobooks really started coming out, um, that I could take it on my phone. Now I've got, I don't know, 50 or 60 books on my phone that I've listened to. So having that for a struggling reader, for that, that child that hasn't had the remediation yet is so important. 
It, it is. And, and we hear that story so often from students, from educators, from parents that, that their child has never finished a book. And it's almost like a rite of passage to be able to, to proclaim and exclaim, I, you know, I finished my first book. And that usually happens for six-year-olds, right? Now, may, you know, tiny little book, but they feel that sense of accomplishment. So you made me think about Tristan. Tristan is a student. He was in eighth grade and out of um, his teacher said, we're going to get you access to Learning Allies, struggling reader, right? Couldn't read in eighth grade, never had finished a book and, and wasn't interested in reading. I mean, why would you be interested in something that you're not really good at? Well, it's you painful. Know, I, I don't think that anybody would. And so his teacher challenged him and said, Tristan, listen, we're, I'm going to read this book and I challenge you to read this same book with Learning Ally. It was a Kwame Alexander book and, and he's a poet and, and he's like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm up for a challenge. So they went, it, it was probably a Thursday, Friday, whatever, come back on Monday and he comes bolting in that classroom and he said, guess what? I finished the book. And let me tell you what happens. And she's like, no, don't tell me. I didn't finish. He was in eighth grade before he ever finished his first book. And that proud moment of that accomplishment, does that relate to you, Stephen? Oh, absolutely. The The other thing, as I'm sitting here listening to you talk, the other thing that just comes to mind is the reason why we read. Mm -hmm. We read to be exposed to language, words, vocabulary, um, content and just sitting here listening to that thinking that you know for you know 40 years I didn't ha I was not exposed to or didn't expose myself to you know all of that content that I could have been doing all my life because reading was painful and, and I didn't have something like this exactly and what if you had you know uh, what if you'd had, what would have been different? Uh, may, maybe nothing, but maybe a lot. You just don't, don't know. And we want to equip our kids with, with that knowledge and thirst for knowledge and thirst for learning and growing and, that you can get from books and exposing them to things that they never would have been exposed to before. Uh, going on adventures and journeys and one of the most popular books that we have in, in our library that students really like is the Percy Jackson series. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know much about Percy Jackson, but it's all about his adventures, and Percy is dyslexic. And so Rick Riordan, that wrote these stories, wrote the story of Percy and then all of these adventures and this, these worlds that he gets to travel to. And it just incites imagination and curiosity and growth and learning for students and if you can't read, if you can't decode the words, you're never going to get it. So my wife, uh, when my kids were little, my wife would read uh, every night to them. And Percy Jackson was was uh, one of the books that she, or a book series that she used to read. And I was always so jealous because she would sit in there and read with them until they fell asleep. And I'm like, you know, I don't read that well. So I don't get to experience that either as a father. So what I ended up having to do was I would tell them to go pick a book off the shelf and I would sit there and make up the entire story off the pictures in the book. And that was the, the only way that I really could uh, read it to them in a way that, or tell them a story in a way that, um, you know, they would enjoy and wouldn't have to sit there and listen to me butcher a book. So, you know, I always felt bad as a father because I wasn't able to read as fluently as my wife was and couldn't get that experience there too. So. Yeah. And you, uh, I mean, you're telling this story here about, you know, you as a father, those emotions, those feelings that are still coming up for you, what you're doing to, to kind of accommodate even now in, in raising your own boys. And, and it also makes me think of if I know you've heard it a million times, all of you listeners out there, I know you've heard this but I'm going to say it again. Dyslexia is hereditary, right? So 
if you as educators out there, if you've got a student that's struggling in your classroom right now, of course, there are things that we need to do for, to look for the indicators in the classroom. But one of the biggest indicators, have a conversation with that child's family and see if it, they may have never been diagnosed, but you could probably ask somebody and say, hey, what about um, mom or dad or grandma or grandpa? Did they have struggles with reading? And, uh, you know, I say this all the time. If they say yes, oh, the little hair is on the back of your neck. It's those it's those parent uh, vibes that you get is those teacher vibes that you get that that something could be going on. Yeah. When I speak to schools, I always lead with that. If you're speaking to a parent of a dyslexic child, the chances of you speaking to a dyslexic who may be um, unidentified is very high. So, you know, we always got to make sure that there's, you know, we're, we're reaching out, trying to find out, hey, maybe that parent's having a hard time understanding what is going on because they're unidentified uh, dyslexic. So, I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's a whole, um, like you said, it's genetic. It's not something that just, um, you know, it's not something just at, at chance. Right. So, um, so TEA, Texas Education Agency, and Learning Ally partnered partnered up. Can you tell us a little bit about this partnership? So, you know, our, our uh, listeners here in Texas, if they, if their child is identified as a, one of these struggling readers, um, they may not know that they get um, Learning Ally. So can you talk a little bit about that partnership? Yes, uh, we're so proud of this partnership, let me tell you. And, and actually this partnership has been in place, now it's evolved over time, but it's been in place since 2005, 15 years now that we've had an ongoing partnership with TEA. So here's what this means in the state of Texas, okay? All of you Texas educators and parents listening in, that because of our partnership that, that we get some uh, funds appropriated through TEA that allows for all K-12 to public and charter schools in the state of Texas get access to the Learning Ally audiobook solution. And that what that means is, is that every single school, public or charter, that your student, as long as they qualify as being a student with a reading deficit, they've got a learning disability related to reading, dyslexia, then they can get access to these audiobooks. Now, remember what I'm saying here. Let me bust a myth for you right now because we hear it so often. Yeah, but you know what? I, I don't want audiobooks to be a crutch. I, you know, I need my <laughs> child to read. Yes, 100%. I will not argue with you there. We need our children to be readers, decoders. But I'm going to go back to what I said at the beginning. That takes a long time. And guess what? Building up their confidence building up their vocabulary, building them up with word exposure, building them up with comprehension through audiobooks, gaining access to what their friends are doing in the classroom, there's, there's nothing better. I mean, they're able to uh, do what everybody else is doing. You don't want to be the eighth grader that everybody else is, you know, reading uh, the anchor text. They're, they're all doing the outsiders as the anchor text in their ELA class. And you're sitting over here reading Frog and Toad. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that just diminishes your self-esteem so much. So that's one component of this partnership. Another component is that we work with TEA to know what state adopted textbooks that uh, Texas is using, and we record those. So not only is, you know, the literature that your kids are using, but also the textbooks. If I'm a struggling reader, I struggle in science, yeah. in history, in math. We work with TEA to get all those books recorded. So, you know, math books, all those word problems. Oh my goodness, your kids are struggling through that. You can get it on uh, the Learning Ally audiobook app, and there we go. We've got access to the audio recording. Kids can listen and work through. And then so final, let me, let me oh, jump in there real quick. So you, you talked about um, textbooks. Um, both my sons uh, that are dyslexic have Learning Ally accounts, and we were having a discussion um, last year at the beginning of the year about um, 
my oldest son's um, honors science class. And I asked her, hey, is this on audiobook? She's like, I don't know. I've never had anybody ask that. It was. So he was able to have his um, honors science class textbook on audiobook. So make sure that if you do have a Learning Ally account, it's not, you know, a basic book. It's there's a ton of books in this in this um, that's available to you, including like you said, including the textbooks. It was it was amazing. I had no idea that the textbooks were even in there. Yeah, I I know. I think some people don't realize the depth and the breadth of the catalog and. You know, like I said, all of these books are recorded by people, so you get human voice. It's not a, you know, it's not a computerized or synthetic voice. It's actual readers, and and you know, I I understand. You know, depending upon whatever it is you're doing, there's different needs for different times. But if you're going to settle in and, and listen to a novel, or even try to have understanding about that science concept or things like that. Having the human voice, have we we pair our voices with the content? I, I just did a Facebook Live this past Monday with uh, Dave Fenoy. Now, many of you may not know his name, but I guarantee you, you've heard his voice. He is one of the most um, sought after voiceover artists, voiceover actors in the entire country. He's won a Sovis Award, which is equivalent of a Grammy or an Emmy Award. McDonald's commercials. He's done video game voiceovers, all kinds of stuff. And he's recording books for Learning Ally. The voice that this man brings is power and passion. And it just brings so much to the books. That is so important. I know even for me, um, when I've tried to use some of the other programs that will, uh, text to speech and sitting there trying to listen to a computerized voice, it is very, very hard for me to sit there and listen to that. So when you he have that human read, um, text, uh, book, audio book, it's, that's the only way that I can listen to it. And same thing with my boys. They, they really enjoy having that human read, um, audiobook. Yeah, it, it makes all the difference. I mean, the the tone, the texture, the prosody. Prosody means it's basically just the, the music of our language. Think about it this way. If you were going to the symphony, going to, or, or, or you know, let's put it in Texas high school terms, right? You're going to the football game and, and you're there to watch the band at halftime. You know what? They don't get out there and play a single monotone note the whole time they're playing. The symphony doesn't play a single monotone note. There's no excitement in that, right? Why would you want to go and pay to hear a symphony do that or go and watch the, the band at halftime do that? No, think about what music is all about. It's highs and lows and it's, uh, you know, thrilling moments and things like that. And that's the same for when you know, we bring our voices to uh, conversation, uh, bring it to these audiobooks. So the, the, the movie that keeps coming to mind when you're talking about that is uh, F Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> you have that teacher, uh, Bueller, uh, Bueller. I mean, th that monotone um, voice or even a computer voice, I mean, it will put me to sleep in a heartbeat. Yes. Yes. All about engagement. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, the other thing I wanted uh, to mention about this partnership with TEA is we um, expanded it this year to include the option for Texas educators to be come and get attendance at our Spotlight on Dyslexia conference. Now, we've always been a virtual conference. We've done it for five years now. So we, in these times, we were kind of poised and ready. Uh, to be able to accommodate a lot of teachers. And as an agreement with TEA in this partnership, we accommodated over 2,000 educators in the state of Texas to attend our Spotlight on Dyslexia conference. I, I'm talking, you know, we had Dr. Anita Archer as, as our keynote speaker. I mean, she's committed her life's work 
to uh, literacy and struggling readers and, and the science of reading. And it's just been an incredible thing. Another piece that we're a part of, don't know if many of you know, I, I hope you do, but um, there was a house bill that came through that said uh, TEA was going to establish reading academies or our K-1 and 2 teachers for elementary principals, for reading specialists as a first wave. And we have integrated the Learning Ally audiobook into those online reading academies that are now required for Texas educators. And I, I mean, I'm so thrilled with that work of you can't teach what you don't know. And so now we are equipping our teachers with uh, what they should know in order to provide the appropriate reading instruction. Absolutely. And, and again, I'm going to go back and touch on um, if we have our children in remediation or dyslexia intervention, we can't use, uh, you, you said it great, you can't use the audiobooks or think of audiobooks as being a crutch. We're using that to get them to the point where we, we need to be. We have to meet the children where they're at and give them the um, availability, the access to this content now, not later. So oh, uh, yes, absolutely. You know, it, I always relate it this way. So, you know, you learn to drive when you're 16, but when you're eight, nine years old, does that mean you should sit at home, never go anywhere because you don't know how to drive yet? Uh, no. I mean, you get in the car and you ride along and somebody, you know, you are a passenger in this journey to get to wherever you need to go. You start learning to drive at 15, get your license at 16. Doesn't mean you've never been anywhere before, been on a journey before, but you needed to, to grow and develop and learn and take those driving courses when you got old enough to become skilled at driving. Same thing with the audiobook, right? It's it's not there to replace any instruction, anything like that, but we shouldn't deprive you. We shouldn't steal away an opportunity for you to be a learner and a grower. So that's what that audiobook is there to do. Yeah, it, you, you use the analogy of driving, um, and we also tell you that reading will take you places. It, it's a way for you to travel. It's a way for you to see things that you've never seen before, hear things that you've never heard before, experience things that, that you probably would never be able to experience. And I think the the saying that you're we're robbing these children of that experience is very accurate. That's what we're doing. I mean, I feel like that was taken from me also. So that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to partner with Learning Ally, because y'all are doing so many amazing things to help bring these experiences to our children that are struggling. Um, could we, do you have a um, student bookshelf that you could open up and, and show our audience so they could get to see kind of what it looks like? I absolutely do. So I will pull that up right now. All right. So what I've got here, you can see, is that I've got the Learning Ally audiobook app. Now the app you can put on any device, Chromebooks, laptops, PCs, Macs, uh, mobile devices, you know, whatever it is. And uh, here's what, it, think about it this way. Imagine your child, your student's physical backpack, right? When they, you know, everybody's starting school. I'm seeing all the first day of schools, uh, pictures come through on social media. Everybody's got their backpack and, uh, you know, they get their books. So think about what's in that backpack. You're going to have your math book and your science book and history book and, and any books maybe the kids checked out from the library or that they need to read for class. So look at Andrea. Andrea is a seventh grader and look at her bookshelf. She's got her Discovering Careers book, which is one of her class books, right? She And then I'm just gonna scroll over quickly to uh, uh, this book, Ingrid and Edgar, I can't say that, that second word book of Greek myths. 
but that is a part of one of her classes. It's, it's a book that they're going to be reading from throughout the year. And look, she's got this letter from Birmingham jail that in their history class, this letter is going to be used um, in their history class. She's got her our history, history textbook, her science book, but there's also books that Andrea wants to read. So, and, and there's a difference between the books you need to read because that's what's assigned to you by your teacher, but we want you to, uh, we want these students to want to read books on their own. So like the book Wonder, you know, she's heard her friends talk about it. There was a movie done a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe I'm interested in that. She just got braces. Maybe I'm going to read the book Smile by Raina Telgemeier, which is a graphic novel, a great way to engage struggling readers. Let me just open up the book Wonder, and uh, I'll be sharing the uh, um, book here in just a second. I got to make sure that my sound is shared. So uh, give me just a second. I'm going to reshare, get all that worked out, share my sound, and we're just going to play a portion of this book. ordinary. I know I'm not an ordinary 10 year old kid. I mean, sure, I do ordinary things. I eat ice cream. I ride my bike. I play ball. I have an Xbox. Stuff like that makes me ordinary, I guess. And I feel ordinary inside. But I know ordinary kids don't make other ordinary kids run away screaming in playgrounds. I know ordinary kids don't get stared at wherever they go. So this book right here, it, it's one of our, our proudest moments. Uh, we were, uh, the casting here, we were able to align the voice of this young boy um, with that voice of that young boy that you hear. So you're, you know, that once again, the human voice bringing such tone and texture. Now, Andrea, struggling reader, she's in seventh grade, but she decodes, she breaks down those words on a second grade level. But once again, she doesn't want to sit and read the frog and toad together books. She wants to read what her friends are reading. So let, I'm just going to highlight here this word screaming. But, but I know, but. And that word screaming right there. Maybe it, you know, hopefully she is getting that explicit instruction. Maybe in that program, she hasn't learned at this point that this EA is a vowel diagraph. And, you know, so me understanding what that means and how to break it down, she hadn't learned that yet. But guess what? Doesn't mean that we shouldn't give her access to books that include this or the um, suffix ing. Or, or, you know, how I would say uh, the grapheme C in this instance. No, it means I've got to give her access to these words. And it's done through audiobooks. Now, I may have said a lot, of, a lot of things there you may not realize and know about when it comes to explicit instruction and reading. But these are the things we've got to teach students. What I love is that when we're sitting here watching... Um, you know, this go through is that we can follow along. And that's one of the things that I tell my boys all the time is even with audiobooks, I want you to follow along with the words. That is a, it's a way of practicing your reading. And then when you get to a word like screaming, if she couldn't uh, or he couldn't sound it out, you get to hear what the word is. You get to click on it and see what the definition is. So it is a way of uh, practicing and uh, reinforcing what you're learning or what you should be learning in your dyslexia intervention classes. I love that you said that. And here's why. Because in, in your classes, you're learning these rules of the English language. You're learning the rules and the, and the uh, letter clusters that, that you need to know in order to decode words. But one of the hardest things for kids to do is to transfer those skills to uh, real life, transfer those skills to a real life setting. It's great to do it in my 
my intervention, my pull out with repeated practice, which is what needs to be happening. But taking that knowledge and then putting it into practice when I need to be reading grade level content in seventh grade, that takes a long time. That takes commitment, and dedication, and repeated practice uh, of those skills. So like you're saying, Stephen, that highlighting of that word, the definition, uh, it's that human voice is actually a model for good reading instruction. Absolutely. There was um, one of the other points that I wanted to make on, you know, the, the bookshelf there is um, for our parents that aren't struggling readers, think about um, any time that you've been in a conversation with, uh, you know, peers or your friends or whatever. Um, and Terry, you kind of brought it up. You know, somebody speaks about a book that they've read. Oh, have you read that book? It's so amazing. You know, yada, yada, yada. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been in that conversation and I have to back out of it because I've never read that book. I don't know anything about it. I can't add anything to the conversation. So for a struggling reader, that is one more um, failure that keeps getting put in your face. And then you, you know, that's, that's another struggle that you have, another failure, another, well, I'm not good enough to even be here and in, in this conversation. And people don't realize that they're doing it. They're not doing it out of uh, being mean or anything else. They assume that everybody can read. So having access to these books is, you know, for our kids and, and, and parents, families, it is so important. The, you're starting to touch on something that students with dyslexia and, and readers that have deficits in reading experience all the time. And it's the feelings of not belonging. It's the feelings of I feel lesser than and I start to kind of push myself away. So if there is a group of people especially these books that are turned into movies. Oh my goodness. You know, we read this in class, the movie's coming out, whatever it is. And mm, I, I can't participate in that conversation. They really start to push themselves away from those groups, from those conversations. They definitely don't raise their hands in class to answer any questions. And it's here also that you start to get some behavioral um, issues popping up I, because I'd rather be seen as the class clown than somebody that's stupid, you know, and, and, you know, I use that word stupid only in the sense of these are the words that hang in the air around a student with dyslexia because they hear them from, from classmates, you know, it, it, it's just happening out there. Well, you, you use the word stupid and we as dyslexics, uh, when we lay down our head at night, and I say this all the time, when I lay my head down at night, I can't lie to myself. And if I'm thinking about where I am compared to all of my other uh, classmates or even family members, you'll say it to yourself. You don't have to have anybody else say it. You'll tell yourself, I'm not good enough. I'm stupid. I'm, I mean, I was having this conversation last night with my sister and I told her, I said, you know, I always looked at you as being the person that never struggled in school. And I struggled constantly. And she was saying, well, you were so outgoing and I wasn't. And I said, I was only outgoing. And just like you said, being the class clown, being the, the loudest, because I didn't want anybody to see that I had any deficits. I had these this huge deficit. It wasn't just a small one. It was a you know, it was the Grand Canyon of deficits while I was in school. I didn't want anybody to see that, so I acted out. I goofed. I didn't really get in trouble that much, but I, I was a clown. I made everybody laugh. I, you know, I would make jokes when uh, it wasn't time to make jokes just because I couldn't participate in that conversation, in that lecture, in that, you know, whatever. So, you know, the 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 more we can give these kids access to the appropriate information, the appropriate remediation, the audiobooks like um, the assistive technology audiobooks, these type of tools 
to allow them to, to participate, to allow them to get FAPE while in school and be successful. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, what? here's the question I like to ask people all the time. What if you had to, you know, parents, educators, you had to show up to work in a place every single day where your most hidden deficit was on display. So, uh, um, you know, what if I had to show up every single day to a music recording studio and I can't sing a lick and have that be on display for six hours a day for people to judge me and criticize me and it would be the only way I could engage with anybody. Man, I wouldn't want to go to that job. I, you know, I'm going to tell you, it would be a tough thing to do. And that's what's happening for our students that have these reading deficits that, you know, their, their weakness, their deficit is on display six hours a day, five days a week, and it doesn't feel very good. So that's why, like you're talking about, Stephen, the accommodations, the intervention, the building you up, the breathing breath and life and fluff into these kids' wings and audiobooks are one way to do that. Uh, it it is it is a game changer to have, you know, this technology, this assist, assistive technology, and the fact, like I said, the fact that we can follow along and practice our reading as well as hearing that human uh, voice and hearing the inflection in their voice and and understanding uh, exactly what is going on and what emotion is being. Um, delivered from the from the context of the of the text you know that is so important um, to have so um, is there is there any other programs that that uh, learning ally is uh, working on or we need to be on the lookout for or um, well let's just start there yeah yeah. So a couple of those things that I mentioned at the beginning is, you know, we're really starting to build out our professional learning services. Um, we did the Spotlight on Dyslexia Conference in June, and then now we are working towards an early literacy conference in December of this year. And once again, bring, bringing highly acclaimed experts so that we can place your teachers in the presence and proximity of these folks to gain knowledge, understanding, learning. Now, here's what's cool about all this, is that we are building a, a community of like-minded educators around these learning opportunities and events, and you know, doing a lot of social media stuff. Anybody can follow me on Twitter. I'm doing a daily video thought leadership tip strategy. Uh, teachers, parents, you can follow me at Terry Nolan, T-E-R-R-I-E-N-O-L-A-N-D, at Terry Nolan. Um, so we've got that coming. We've got, we have, uh, Stephen, we've got some good stuff in the works around early literacy um, with um, some of the innovation that we're trying to do around the audiobook. Um, we're also enhancing that audiobook experience and uh, building in cool features into the app itself. Students over time, eventually, not yet, will be able to do some progress monitoring on their own, some goal setting around reading. Uh, just, wow, creativity and innovation. We're on the forefront. I'm excited. And if you are um, an avid reader and you would like to volunteer, um, you can volunteer to read books. Is that correct, Terry? That's so correct. Now, I will tell you, especially since, um, you know, pandemic and everyone kind of had a little bit of time on their hands, our volunteer, um, uh, our, how many people were signing up to volunteer on a monthly basis, like, like went sixfold of what we normally see in a month. So right now, who we're looking for, we are looking for diverse voices. We're looking for uh, Latino voices. We're looking for uh, black voices, male, female. Um, you know, so if you you are know somebody else is that that has that really great uh, diverse voice, we would love to have you right now. That that's uh, always a goal um, 
and should be for all of us is to give back, especially, you know, our kids that, um, or, or I say adults now that have been remediated, uh, it would always be a goal to, to go do an audio book and have your voice out there so you know that you're giving back to um, kids that need it. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to tell a quick little story here. Um, we also serve individuals that are blind and we had um, this young man and I call him a young man. He's, he's in his thirties now, but blind from birth and um, Hobie Wedler is his name. He was named one of the top 30 under 30 in Forbes magazine, achieved his doctorate. Um, I mean, just an amazing man. And he was doing a presentation for our volunteer community in person uh, several years ago. And, you know, he's up there speaking and somebody at the back of the room asked a question. And so this person asked the question and Hobie said, you are the man that read my college science book. I know your voice. Mm -hmm. and, and they said there wasn't a dry eye in the room because that is the power that an individual has to give back because without that man's voice, Hobie couldn't have done what he did to gain his doctorate. I mean, think about how touching that, I mean, the, the fact that he could recognize that man's voice from the other end of the room and how often he had to sit there and listen to that man's voice to, to you know, have that done. I mean, yeah. I, I'm sitting here thinking of, you know, who are some of the, the, the voices that you hear all the, I mean, James Earl Jones, uh, I mean, you hear his voice, you know exactly who he is and to have, you know, that voice being read or, you know, something like that. I mean, that, that's so touching. And yeah, I, I love sharing that story just because yeah. there's such power in it. So good things happening at Learning Ally. I'm telling you, in this TEA partnership, like I said, we couldn't be more proud that we have this opportunity to impact thousands of educators, students, families across the state. So if you are a, a student in Texas and you don't have a Learning Ally account, how and or another state that how do they get a learning ally account yep excellent question so you would teachers you would visit learningally.org forward slash texas all spelled out t-e-x-a-s learningally.org forward slash texas and that's where you'll go to find our support staff that they're poised ready to go to help you be able to figure out you know, if your school already has an account, if they need to get you set up, get you everything that you need in order to get set up. Now, if you're a parent and you're like, oh my goodness, yes, so we need to get access. Here's what I would encourage you to do. You can go to that same website, learningally.org forward slash Texas, and um, reach out to one of those folks listed there on that page. And they can point you in the right direction of maybe who at the school would be somebody to contact or go ahead and reach out and contact your dyslexia therapist, your special education teacher, you know, whoever might be working with your student. Now, remember, this is paid for by the state of Texas. So uh, teachers, there's no cost to your school or district. Parents, there's no cost to you or your family. Absolutely. So if, you know, of our listeners, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me also, and I'll put you in contact um, with Learning Ally and or, you know, help you work with your districts on uh, providing this uh, service. And if we're in other states, are there any other states that are, are working uh, or do the same type of program like Texas does? Yes, definitely. So we've got some state contracts in Florida, in Illinois, Massachusetts, North Carolina, Virginia, um, it, California, we've got it through the community college district there. So, uh, you know, and, and we're developing more partnerships all the time. And if you are in another state that does not, um, would not qualify under some state grant opportunity, you know what, it's still so affordable when you uh, um, do, do a license for your school or district. Um, you know, uh, pennies to the dollar on what it means to get access to a library of over 80,000 titles. 
and you can just find us at learningally.org. Uh, we've got parent memberships, school memberships. So we actually have, uh, Terry and Learning Ally actually gave us our own discount code, ED20. So um, for a brand new family membership, you can save 20% uh, on checkout with using the uh, discount code ED20. So um, if you are in one of the states that, that does not provide this service for free, you can, you can provide, um, you can get it that way also. Yes, absolutely. So, um, Terry, we're running up on uh, our time here. You know, thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, thank you and Learning Ally for your continued support for Empower Dyslexia and the important job that we're doing as well as the important job that, that y'all are doing providing our uh, struggling readers, our learning disability uh, population students with such great content and um, you know this assistive technology that that they have giving them access to um, you know being able to participate in class and and showing them that they can be successful that they can be um, the student that they know they're they're able to do um, so please uh, come back and uh, let's continue our conversation and supporting our families and our students um, Congratulations on your uh, doctorate um, thesis that you're going through. Um, you've, you've dedicated your life to this. I'm so proud of you. Um, let's continue to, to move forward and, and work together. Thank you, Stephen. I, I appreciate it. I promise once I, once I get that title of doctor, I won't make you call me that. It's just going to be my husband and my kids. That have to <laughs> <laughs> I will absolutely call you Dr. Nolan. Oh, goodness. Because I know that's a lot of hard work. I mean, it's, that's, um, I'm always so impressed by the things that uh, our conversations and the things that you're doing and, and being out there and supporting our families um, and our population like you do. So thank you again so much. Thank you, Learning Ally, for all the support. Um, again, please be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, leave us a comment. Uh, we love to hear from our, our viewers. Uh, make sure that you go out and uh, check out Learning Allies um, bookshelves or their, their content out there. Uh, like Terry was explaining, there's over 80,000 uh, titles that are out there. Um, it is something that we need to have to make sure that our children are able to participate in our class and they're able to feel like they're they're um, going to be successful in school. So that is all the time we have today. Um, please be sure to join us next week, and um, we're going to hear from our sponsors now. Thank you, and have a great day. Learning Ally is a proud sponsor of the Empowered Dyslexia podcast. At Learning Ally, we are always looking for new ways to engage readers struggling with a reading deficit like dyslexia and help them work to their potential. Visit www.learningally.org to learn about the Learning Ally audiobook solution, including which of your students are eligible for access. If you live in Texas, we have great news. The Texas Education Agency provides access to the Learning Ally audiobook solution for all K-12 public and charter school students with reading deficits. Get started today by visiting www.learningally.org slash Texas.